Having accurate simulation components for Esprit programs means every time you make a program, you can be more confident in the results at the machine. So let's get started making a Kenametal grooving holder. So we want to create this grooving shank tool from Kenametal. And what I did is actually downloaded this from the machining cloud. So if you're not familiar with the machining cloud, go over to machiningcloud.com and you know you could get some solids from a lot of OEM websites but the machining cloud also has some solids and the nice thing about machining cloud is you can build an entire tool assembly additionally you can find out all of the products that work with something so looking at this I can check the box here and really quick just to download the model you'd come here and select 3d rendered model so if you want to follow along this is the product that I'm going to be using in this tutorial but I can say add to tool assembly and then here I'll just pick add an insert and then you can you know pick one of these insert types that would fit with this uh, depending on whatever it was that you know you were doing so if I just pick something here you know it shows you some particulars about that insert um, you know you can pick different types of inserts and it will show you you know what the width and the the height of that insert is going to be so these are all really um, adjustable so it's important to figure out like here we see that this one is going to be 3.175 by uh, 2.794 so I'm going to move this out of the way and so we're looking at this here and the first thing that we want to do is make sure that this is going to be in the correct orientation and position for the machine so we do want the shank oriented along the blue Z vector with the Z vector pointing up into the static holder that would be mounted on the turret additionally we want the insert facing the main spindle which is going to be the positive X axis so what we want to do is rotate this 180 degrees so you can hit control a on your keyboard and right click and either select you know select all but once we have it grouped we're gonna say copy and then we're gonna pick rotate we're gonna say move we're gonna put in 180 and about the origin is okay so we're gonna flip that around and then looking at this I'm looking at this and we have the insert over here on this side so Y0 is actually on the other side so in a spree what we do is we put the we put the uh, shank at the middle position basically along the machine Z axis so we need the origin to be positioned right over here the easiest way to do that is to come over to the home move over to move origin and we'll just dynamically snap our zero point the origin point at that new location so that is done um, basically this holder is positioned correctly it's oriented correctly and now what we want to do is focus in down here on the insert itself and where that uh, zero point is going to be located so we want the leading edge here and down at the bottom right you have these icons on this first one is the selection filter so when we click on that you will likely have this as the way that it looks when you first open that so what we want to do is click on the bodies area just in this general rectangular area and it will basically turn white so right now we're not able to select any solid elements but we're gonna turn the faces on so we're gonna click on that third icon from the right and then I'm gonna zoom in on this triangular face here and in the solids tab which again if you don't have that open come over here to home and then over to the right show hide and then you want to this uh, or make sure that this is checked for solids so right click in here and say create a bounding box and when we do that we'll get that theoretical corner that we would touch off on so looking at this we're gonna come down to these these work plane commands and we're gonna pick translate activate that and then we're gonna pick that bottom corner and that bottom corner is now going to be saved out 
as our TA position. So we don't need an HA position because this basically what we're loading is our holder. So we're not going to put any holder inside this holder. I mean, this only works with these inserts. So uh, we just need a TA position. So looking at this, though, um, we're not at Y0. So looking at the geometry and rectangle, we're going to pick rectangle. What I like to do is pick on this corner, and then it asks you for the second reference position point. So we're going to hit 0, the, the 0 key on our keyboard, and hit Enter. In a spree, the P0 key is the, um, uh, the uh, sorry, the, the P0 point is the origin, the, the XYZ0. And on this model, we can see that this is located right at Y0. So we know that this is exactly where it needs to be. On some of these, this is slightly shifted. I've seen them like, you know, three or five or seven thousand. So it depends on what you want to do. I know some machines that don't have any Y axis, you know, want to make sure that this is at Y0. So if you want to put it where the solid model indicates it needs to be, or if you want to kind of find that zero point, this would be a 3D uh, a 3D cube as well, and you could just snap the, do another translate, you know, home translate, and move that to the other, you know, wherever the other corner would be. So uh, we're pretty much ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and because uh, this this insert is really the only one that would work for this, I'm going to come down here and disable this. So down here at the bottom you have this disable. I'm going to disable and then I'm going to highlight the whole uh, solid for this insert and just hit the delete key so that it's gone. We don't want that as part of our simulation model. So here I'm going to create a TA underscore and then I'm going to do a 3.175 by uh, 2.794 and I'll put millimeters there. So later on if I am questioning what size insert goes into this holder I have it here. I'm going to hit enter and that's saved as my TA position. So with this now we can come here to file and save as with nothing highlighted we're going to come over and pick GDML and again at the end of the GDML name itself I like to put an underscore and then we'll repeat that. It's going to be 3.175 by 2 0.794 millimeters. This was a metric shank, so just keeping everything consistent there. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit save. And now we're ready to check this out on how this would look on a machine. So here I have a machine loaded with another holder on there. So if you didn't have this, you would just right click on the station and there would be a, you know, add an adaptive item selection here just like all the other tutorials but since I already have one it's not there so if I want to edit an existing holder from something that I had before I could just double click it and then we can come over here and pick oh sorry that's the uh, that's the adaptive item we want to keep that of course what it is uh, this is the one so when you when you um, have an adaptive or sorry when you have a static holder and it has an HA position you're gonna see a right click add adaptive item here and then you can load a custom or step you know specific uh, OEM tool product on top of that so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna change this one from this one to the one that we just made so I'm just gonna come in here and, and double click that uh, again you would right click and just say add but I'm going to pick the one that we just made, which was, I believe, this one. I'm going to say OK. And that changes the, you can see it slightly changed there to a different, uh, different look. So we've got our, our insert in there. And uh, this will need to be edited because the one that I had for the prior one was a little bit larger, I believe. So here I'm going to come in and just come to the insert and change some of these values. So 
here, remember, this was uh, 3.175. So I'm going to say equal to 3.175 divided by 25.4. And we're going to say enter. And that changes the width, but maybe I want to change some of these other things. Um, I'll come in here and just kind of zero these out to the same amount. So 0 0.125, 0 0.125, and then, you know, depending on what you want to do for the thickness, uh, that, that's all fine because this is the only area that's going to be cutting. And then uh, basically, you know, I might want to change this to a, a 1 8 groove. 0.125 groove and now we can use this for simulation so uh, one other thing that I should probably cover is if you came and created a tool on the shank itself you want these values to be zeroed out if I had values here so I'll just put in some values um, we'll put in uh, 0.787 and then I'll put in like 4 here and put in 0.787 and you'll see that when I do that the Esprit generates a holder a shank I should say for me which I don't want so obviously when I'm loading a solid holder I'm just gonna make all these zero so this goes away and now I have my completed assembly with my static my shank and then my insert and now we can use it for simulation so hopefully this tutorial helps you guys build some custom products to use inside of Esprit once I've done this once I could utilize this anywhere that I want in any program very quickly just by loading it and uh, having more accurate simulation